Like I said before, in Nantucket, we have brilliant speakers and brilliant writers. I'm talking now to William Cohen. He wrote this book, Why Wall Street Matters. How long have you worked on uh, Wall Street? I worked on Wall Street for 17 years, from 1987 to 2004. So since 2004, I've been a writer, and I've written five books, sixth on the way. Yeah. Four of them have about, been about Wall Street. One of them was about a scandal at uh, uh, one of our major universities. Why did you leave in 2004? What an excellent time before the crisis hit us all in Europe and everywhere all around the world. Uh, confluence of events. It was my time to leave. Uh, uh, it was not voluntary, uh, which is the way people usually leave Wall Street. Why would you ever leave a job that pays you as much as Wall Street pays where you don't have to take any risk with your own money? Yeah. You said that was really the core of Wall Street at the problem, uh, basically the problem, because they can take a lot of risk. How, how does that work in practice? You've been doing that for 17 years, so you know exactly how these people function. They're not bad. They just work according to the reward system. Exactly. They do, they do what they're rewarded to do. They're not bad people at all. They, they just do. They, they, you know, uh, uh, Wall Street firms are money-making machines. That's what they're in business to do. They're not... They're not uh, uh, you know, and, and colleges or uh, charitable organizations, you know, they are money-making machines and people there are rewarded to make money and so that's what they do. Now the problem is that they are rewarded now to take big risks with other people's money. They, you know, once upon a time people on Wall Street were rewarded to take prudent risks with their own money. Mm -hmm. We need to get back to some semblance of that compensation structure so that people have skin in the game. They have accountability for their actions. So they can't just get rewarded toward taking risks with our money. Okay, but what, what did fundamentally happen in 2008 and how we fixed the system and what is the system now? Didn't it fundamentally change? Isn't, aren't there safeguards? Are the measurements you know, that, people, that the banks have to have more capital, that the uh, yes, reward systems are more prudent? No, the reward systems aren't more prudent, but they are, there are, have been changes, yes. Banks are more heavily regulated. Uh, they can take less risk than they were in this country. Uh, uh, they have to have more capital than they had then. But, you know, uh, bank, bankers are very clever. They are rewarded still to take big risks with other people's money, and that's what they're going to do. Yeah. And they're not going to stop until they can't do it. And then once the market tells them they can't do something anymore, that's when they'll stop. Otherwise, they won't stop. And that is the core. Okay, you, you basically were invited to talk here uh, about your book, but you said, hey, I'm going to talk about the next crisis which are there. And there's four factors. What are those four factors right. which will put us in those uh, big crises? The reward system we already covered. That's what are the other three? one of them. Uh, the second one is what uh, I call uh, uh, light touch regulation. We've gone back to uh, the pendulum swung very far after the financial crisis to heavier regulation. Now under Donald Trump, uh, Wall Street is much less heavy re regulated. They're much back to what I call light touch regulation. What does it mean, light touch regulation? It means, it means that regulators aren't quite as vigilant about regulating Wall Street as they had been, and that's a problem. Okay, that's problem. You, you told us in the speech it was me it meant really no uh, no well, regulations uh, to mean uh, to talk of. Uh, before the financial crisis, it meant no regulations at all. Uh, you know, it w does not quite mean that yet. I think we're trending back towards something like that, but we're not there yet. Donald Trump would like there to be less and less regulation. He boasts about how there's going to be less and less regulation. That's not good for Wall Street. Wall Street needs guardrails. It needs more regulation. The third problem is what I call the mispricing of risk, which is basically people are overpaying for uh, bonds and debt-like securities. They are, they're ratcheting up the price of those securities. The yields are falling. Uh, and when that kind of risk re reward ratio returns to normal levels, potential for a lot of money to be lost. Mm -hmm. And it's $41 trillion, the bond market, do you think that that is not a good investment anymore? No, bonds are not a good investment. Bonds are a sucker's bet at the moment because with the Fed raising interest rates, uh, uh, you know, and there's a total mismatch between risk and reward in the bond market. And everybody can see it coming. I mean, it, they are announcing it, the Fed, that they're going to increase records. So the bonds should know, the bond owners should know it. Well, investors are in the, still in the midst of what I call a yield hunger games where they're fighting tooth and nail to get higher and higher yields. And they, as a result, they pay up, uh, they bid up the price of bonds and they will uh, uh, allow uh, uh, 
uh, creditors and debt debtors to get away with things that they normally know that they shouldn't do. What's the fourth reason? The fourth reason is the inherent nature of banking itself, the problem with fractional banking, which is that uh, people think their money is at the bank when it really is not at the bank. And if, as long as they don't all go to the bank at the same time to get it, we'll be fine. But in a crisis, uh, people do go to the bank at the same time. And, uh, banking is a confidence game, and when people lose confidence in their banks, then all bets are off. When will the trigger happen? Of that we are going now, we're now on top of the world, everybody's happy, everybody's making money, the, the stock market is doing great, unemployment is doing low, we have fantastic growth. When will the trigger I, be? I think, I think there are uh, uh, examples of problems all over the place, but nobody's noticing them, unfortunately. Some people are, but nobody rings a bell at the top of the market. So. Same like in 2005, when Volcker came well, up with his Volker speech. Volcker came to spoke at the Stanford Business School, nobody listened to him, and he was right. Two years, three years? Easily, maybe sooner. We have, don't forget, we have Mr. High Beta President in the White House, and that means that risk is just uh, you know, lurking around the corner every day. Next summer, I'm going to be here, and there's a new book. What is it going to be about? It's called Four Friends. It's about four friends of mine from high school and what happened to them in their lives. It's a great story. Thank we'll you. be there next summer.